Okay, uh, welcome back for another video from Rusty Rustic's Pantry. Or Rusty's Rustic Pantry, did I say that right? No? Anyway, it's been a long day. It's New Year's Eve 2016. Uh, getting ready for welcome 2017. And what we're doing today is we're going to make some chorizo or chorizo, however you want to say it. Um, and these are going to be air dried, hung for about four weeks, and then packed for. Well, it's week during the year, um, but will keep for months in the backpack after we're allowed to dry a little bit. So we're going to go over uh, the basics of making these. I've already laid out the ingredients, where I need to weigh them, and we'll just go through now. First of all, the mixing of uh, the pork. In this tub here, I've got five kilograms of ground pork and pork fat. Um, the reason I've laid it out nice and flat in this big tub is it makes the mixing a hell of a lot easier get a consistency of the ingredients going through. Now the most important ingredient in these is the salt because this is the salt that actually cures and uh, stops the, uh, the pork from going off while it cures and dries. The ratio of salt to pork and fat is 2.2 percent. So here with five kilos of pork I've got 110 grams of everyday table salt. If you want to be posh, you can use kosher salt, things like that. Um, it's entirely up to yourself. I'm not going to be using any curing agents other than the salt. We're not going to be using pink salt, Prague powder, whichever you want to call it. This is going to be an artisan thing that is just cured in the old traditional ways that we would have done over hundreds of years. So to start off with, we sprinkle the salt as evenly as we can over the top of the pork. It doesn't actually look a great deal when you think about it compared to the weight of the, the pork, but this is all that's required to get the curing done. Okay, over nice and easy and even, and makes the mixing an awful lot easier. So that's important, 2.2% of the weight of the meat to cure it. Next, we've got some good, very, very finely chopped garlic, which I'm going to put on here. Um, you do want quite a bit of garlic in the chorizo. Um, more than you would do say like an Italian or a French salami. Now I haven't actually measured this out, I'm quite cavalier about what I, what I do. It's really the only things I measure out are the weight of the meat uh, can for the weight of the salt because that's a really important bit of the rest I just do by eye and by taste. So we spread all that out over the top. Next Freshly ground fennel. These are uh, just some fennel seeds. They're not going to go too heavy, they're actually quite a strong aniseedy taste. Now remember the, we really want the smokiness of the paprika to come through. Well, there's a little bit of fennel in there. Now we come to the paprika. Just rinse these gloves for a second. This is the main reason not even why I'm wearing gloves because paprika can be awfully, awfully um, well stains dead easy and it takes ages to get off your skin. This is gonna need a lot of paprika, so I've got a tin here of sweet paprika. And I've got to add the whole tin. Uh, I don't know what the weight is, 70 grams of that. So this is your extra sweet paprika, nice and smoky. It looks quite a, a lot of paprika to that, but bear in mind when you buy chorizo, um, all you see really it is just bright red. And it's a little bit of normal everyday paprika. Just over the top of that. And we'll see as we go with the colour, this as we mix it, as to whether we need to add any more. Finally, a little bit of very finely ground black pepper. That's where I start to sneeze. Hopefully not. Let's give that a little bit of a rinse. And then, to loosen it all up, Go into the casing to make it nice and sloppy. As it's Spanish sausage, 
we're using a Spanish sherry. Good glove of that. Let's keep the mixture nice and loose. And this is the messy bit. Here we go. See, there's only one way to do this, and that's just to get in there with your hands and give it a thorough, good mix up. And I can see straight away that we're probably going to need a bit more paprika in here. Any strands of uh, sinew or anything you see in the pork mince, just remove it this time as well. Wow, that really just smells nice, actually. And by the time you've done this, you land up with arms like Popeye. Get some more paprika in there. There we go. So I'd imagine we've probably got in total about 150 grams of paprika going into this. We've used a 70 gram pack up. I'm probably putting the same again of the, uh, the normal paprika on top of the sweet. Okay, what we'll do is I'll carry on mixing that for a bit, and what we'll do is we'll set up and we'll get ready for actually filling the casings uh, to make our tree and getting ready to hang up. Okay, so we've come back, I've had time to do a little bit of clearing up and um, sort of set up my sausage stuffer. Now the only way I can actually get this to fit on the workshop is by removing one of the drawers. Um, but this I bought um, off of eBay for 50 quid. Uh, really, really simple machine, in perfect working order. Shop about for them if you want to get into this. Obviously you can use for making any sort of sausage you want really. Um, so we're going to fill this up first of all. Um, pivots up so you can load it up with our sausage mix. Now what you want to try and do here is get it right down to the bottom by snapping in like so and getting the air out of the machine. Air is the enemy when it comes to doing this sort of thing. So you need to push it in, fill up and round it all down again, change your gloves because this stuff does tend to stain. Hence I'm also wearing a red top. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and making a mess into the bar. It's on your sock. Thomas, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's not the easiest job to do. So we get in there. Push it all down. If you want to put your hand over the end like that, just make sure it's not coming out. But I've got to you, a tea towel down there to stop all the any stuff coming out onto the workshop itself. Nearly there, we're going to have a good couple of runs of this. One more handful. And that'll do. I don't know if you want to have a quick look at the top there. I haven't filled it all the way to the top because the plunger and everything's got to go in. So that's the actual stuff of the machine filled. Lower it back down and it's got a locking pin that goes through the holes in there that won't stop it rising and moving while well, we're actually um, filling the sausages. Now, what I haven't done is put in our plunger. This actually lifts out, so we can lift it out to put in the plunger. Should have done in the first place, really. And put it on the rack, like so. This then places back in into the cradle, back down 
and it in place. And then the handle obviously goes on here, which will actuate your plunger now. We're taking the bung out on the plunger to set the air out, you can hear that hissing out now. There's a little tiny gap in there just to let the air out. As soon as you feel the pressure, there you go, build up. That's now in contact with the meat in the uh, stuffing machine. And our director has carelessly left his phone on receiving texts while we're doing our filming. So unprofessional. <laughs> He's alright, don't worry. Right, the next part, we'll just move this out of the way. The next part is what we're actually going to, the casings now. I've already preloaded um, the, uh, the uh, tube. This is the largest tube that I have, and I'm using beef middles. Uh, they are one of the widest casings you can buy, natural casing, beef intestine. I'll just screw that on there. Nice and tight. Now we're sort of ready to go. Now then, the first thing we need to do is make sure we get the sausage meat to the end of the nozzle. So we just pump some through to the end, just there. Because what we don't want is getting any air, or too much air, into the casings. Now then, this is where I can take my gloves off, hopefully. And just here I've got already pre-cut a little strings because we're going to be tying these sausages individually. Now, the best way to tie these is to get the casing, let it come over the end of the nozzle, put a little bit of a stuffing mixture into the casing like so. And then what we do is simply, get it, so we've got a little length of the casing, one string, tie it as close to the meat as we can, nice and tight, then flip that back over and do a double knot. That will secure the casing and make sure nothing comes out the bottom. And then what you can do for hanging it is simply tie it off in a loop, like so. Shay, there's a clear plastic bag on that table, if you can see it, a uh, sort of a patterned one. Let's have a look. That's all right. I'm going to use this as a guide to the length of the individual tree we're going to make, because these are the bags that I'm going to try and vacuum pack them in once they're air dried. Now then, this is the really tricky bit, and you can guarantee if it's on camera, I'm going to make a complete and utter mess of it. But we're going to fill the casings now, so gentle pressure. Let the meat slip into the casings, guiding them off nice and slowly. You can see I'm no expert at this. They will start to curve around a bit. Use your hands to create some tension. Let them fill up nicely. And so they take a bit of a turn because obviously the casings are natural casings and they do have a bend in them. And that's it for the first one. What we do is back off the pressure a little bit. Take the casing away from the nozzle. And as we did at the beginning, we get a string, tie it off as close to the meat as we can. Even if you trap a little bit of meat in there, it's not a problem. Nice and tight. Scissors. Trim that off. And again, flip it over. Double knot this end so that nothing comes out. Now with this loop, this string, you can actually admit doing the loop. Cut the string off. And there you have your first chorizo. All nicely filled, all ready. See how lovely and pink and red that is in there. And that will hang for about four weeks to six weeks. 
Yeah. So I just want to hang about there from that out of the way. In a couple of hours I'll probably come back. If there's any air pockets in there, I'll just prick that with a, a, a pin just to make sure there's very little air inside the sausage. So we'll do another one. Get the meat to the end of the tube, like so. Squeeze off some of the casing. One string, again cereal. It's a lot easier to pre-cut these strings and rather than have to mess about beforehand. This is just normal butcher's twine. It's one good knot. Flip it back over. Double knot. And then tie off to make your hanging loop. Like so. And again, keep the pressure on. Turn the handle nice and smoothly and slowly. Let the casing fill. And take the mixture. Let's see if it'll start to bend the other way now. Let it fill nice and full. It's worth taking your time on this because this is uh, your final finished product and you want it to be as perfect as possible really. Just checking the length on that. Okay, again, back it off a little bit, pull all the sausage out, nip the casing close to the meat, another string as close as you can to the filling, like so. I'm going to trim, fold that back over, and the double knot. Like so. Trim that case in a bit. Incidentally, these casings you can buy at any decent. Um, Butcher Sundrumans. Um, they usually come in packets packed with salt, and all you do is when I get them home, um, I take them out of the packet, put them into uh, like a Tupperware bag or something like a box or something like that, and hang them up. Uh, leave them in um, salt water and keep them in a Tupperware box like that, and they'll keep for years basically. They'll keep for a long, long time. I've probably had these ones about a year. Again, so we'll do one more. Slide them off. Let the air come through. Along with some of the sausage meat. There we go. And again. Tie off as close as you can. Flip over, double knot, tie your loop, and again, nice and gently, slide the filling. And you may have to occasionally just slide the, the casings down the tube a little bit. There we go. Just a touch. Pull your casing. A bit. Like it tie off. And that's just split there so it can't scissors where they put them. Where they put the scissors. There. Come off. 
flip over and double knot. There we go, and that's all you need to know really. Now when these have air dried a little bit or even at this stage if you want to you can hang them out in a cold smoker to give them extra smoky flavour um, which I'll probably do with some of these let them absorb some of the smoke, some hickory smoke or something like that and in about four to six weeks you can actually eat these raw, there's no need to cook them, we can slice them good enough, great in salads um, really good in pizzas, that sort of thing but yeah, well, I'll carry on and finish off this little pack Thank you very much for watching.